Good morning, good afternoon, good evening traders, wherever you are in the world. I hope you're well. I hope you all have had an amazing weekend. Pips of Persia here, coming to you with another weekly market outlook video, preparing you for the trading week of 1st of April 2019 to 5th of April 2019. As usual, before we get started, disclaimers. These setups are purely for educational purposes and by no means require any action. Your capital is at risk, therefore never risk more than what you're willing to lose. Past profits do not guarantee future results. From the pairs I'll be analysing, make sure to take notes, make sure to choose a few of them that you quite like and agrees with your analysis, save the analysis and then see how the market reacted to that analysis in the next few days. If in any way your analysis disagrees with mine, uh, please stick to your own analysis. That's the best way for you to learn. Okay, do not trust someone else's analysis, just use these setups as pure guidelines. That's it. Make sure to join my Telegram channel as well. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description. I will be sending updates for these setups on my Telegram or if I'm looking at, let's say, a pair and uh, I haven't covered it in the video, I will also be forwarding that to my Telegram channel as well. So link in the description, make sure to join it. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, actually, before anything, let's go ahead and have a look at the news that's coming out for the coming week. Uh, we do have some high impact US dollar and Canadian dollar on Monday, but the more dominant news that I'll be looking for are some sort of statement. Okay, these are the sort of stuff that I will be uh, very much looking forward to. Uh, out of all of those, it's more or less just Canadian dollar. That's going to be a statement. So if in any way this, uh, this statement is hawkish, uh, then that means Canadian dollar is going to gain strength. If it's dovish, then it's going to lose strength. So I'm going to trade accordingly. It's also NFP week. We can see on Friday we have non-farm payroll news. Uh, that's the first Friday of the month. So the market is going to be a little bit funny throughout the whole week. But on Friday, especially the U.S. dollar and Canadian dollar markets are going to be are going to be a little bit funny. They're going to have sudden shifts. They might not follow technicals. So just be very careful. Stay on top of the news and make sure it doesn't take you out. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Australian dollar against the Canadian dollar. Uh, now, last week with Australian dollar versus Canadian dollar, we uh, basically didn't come up as much as we wanted it to. It, it came. Only a few pips short of our entry, about 10 pips short of our entry, uh, which was at this triple top over here and a touch of a trend line. Uh, due to some news, it ended up dropping already. However, we can see on a weekly time frame, we've actually closed as a shooting star formation over there. So we can take further sells down. Now, on the four hour time frame, we formed a left shoulder head, right shoulder formation over there. We have closed below the neckline as well. Uh, we came back for the retest, but then we dropped further down. This market still has some room to drop. You can see that my final target would lie somewhere around 0 0.9413 or 14 around that zone over there, at that double bottom zone over there. Okay, so it does still have some room to drop. However, to do so, I would need to see a clear break below this trend line over here, below this trend line clear close below the trend line, come back for the retest and then for me to take some sales based on that. So and move like this I'm expecting for Australian dollar versus the Canadian dollar. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Canadian dollar versus the Japanese yen. Now we can see not um, not this trading week but the, the last trading week we actually closed as a Marubozu closure over there and we merely came back for a pullback over there okay so we do still have this left shoulder head right shoulder formation is still not satisfied all the market is doing is just giving us a little pullback creating some divergence as well so we're coming up for the third touch of the trend line and fib level somewhere between 61 to 71 percent so expect a little push up to touch that trend line and the fibonacci level and then the continuation to start your um, final take profit could be at the minus 27, but for this head and shoulder to be satisfied, we actually need to drop down all the way to here, uh, which I do see that happening, especially with the Canadian dollar news coming out. Euro against the Canadian dollar. 
And again, last week we were up here where we sold it off that almost quadruple top formation. And uh, it was a very, very nice sell. It was a very, very nice sell coming down. So um, I still do genuinely believe that the market has some room to fall. And we reacted up to a key, uh, we reacted to a key um, resistance zone over here. And we've actually broke below this support zone over here as well. So all I'm expecting for it to happen is for us to get a little pullback to retest that broken through zone and then the continuation to the downside to continue after that. A move like this would be very, very good to see for Euro versus Canadian dollar. However, because last week we actually caught over 200 pips on this pair alone, um, it, it's not really necessary to trade it this week. You know, we, we, we squeezed as much pips as we could, as many pips as we could last week from it. So um, we don't necessarily have to do that two weeks in a row. Euro versus the Swiss franc. Now, weekly time frame, uh, two very strong bearish candles, Mariboza closure for last week, closing below all of the previous weekly closures over there. Okay? That means something. That means we, we are still within a bearish momentum. We are still within a bearish trend. <clears throat> so we can go ahead and trade accordingly. On an intraday time frame, what I'm expecting to happen is for us to get a little pullback to retest the broken through zone and the continuation to the downside to start from an intraday perspective. Okay, 60 to 70 pips. However, the zone that I have marked over here is a dominant reversal zone. We can see in the past once, twice. Break kind of coming for the retest. So I believe we can see some buy positions coming here before we go for the major sell down. Uh, so Euro versus Swiss franc on a weekly time frame, we can go ahead and mark this zone. On an intraday scale, we can go ahead and take some sales down to that zone. And then assume some buy positions up from there. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> GBP AUD. Now, this is quite an interesting pair because at the end of the day, it is a pound pair. We're getting closer and closer. Well, I mean, we're not getting closer and closer to Brexit, the date is kind of gone, but um, it's still in the news, if that makes sense. There's still a lot of random news popping out for Pound out of nowhere, so uh, it's, it is quite important to keep an eye on those news and make sure your trades are safe against it. But um, from a technical perspective, <clears throat> we have a touch of a trend line there, second touch, almost a third respect, break, coming back for the retest of that trend line. Now, on a four-hour time frame, we can see that that retest can potentially line up with a key Fibonacci level, 61% to 71%, as well as this previous reversal zone. As you can see, we reacted to the market very, very well over there. So when the market comes down to around the 1.815 zone or 1.817 zone, somewhere around there, I will be looking for some candlestick confirmations which can potentially help us for executing some buy positions on this pair. Pound versus a Canadian dollar, it's a similar story. Uh, so on a weekly time frame, we've actually closed as an evening star formation over there. So I do believe we might get another push down. However, in evening star as well as a bearish engulfing. Uh, however, I don't think this push down is going to be maintained for a long period of time. Uh, I do believe that we're going to be uh, showing reaction to this trend line. One touch over there, second touch over here, almost a third touch, fourth touch over there, break and retest Fibonacci level. So I am going to keep this setup in mind so long as I get some sort of price action over there telling me to go ahead and execute some buy positions. I will, because this will be very nice buy to the upside, <coughs> to the high of that zone, if even we might even go higher. So... Um, Although we got that evening start on the weekly time frame, I don't think it's going to be maintained for a very long period of time. So uh, if we do close below the trend line, however, and we end up getting a very strong bearish momentum, then obviously I wouldn't go ahead and execute some buy positions. That's why price action is key. Pound versus the Japanese yen. On a eight hour time frame, it was, I believe, uh, we saw that bearish flag over here, which... Um, almost told us very clearly that this breakout of the downside is going to come. So move, flag, 
continuation. I still do believe the, uh, the market needs to continue to the downside for this flag to be satisfied. However, when it, where it, when it reaches this 143 roughly, uh, 143.000 zone, uh, which is the previous reversal zone, once over here, twice over there, uh, I will be bullish on this pair. And I would be executing some buy positions on pound versus Japanese yen as well. Pound against the New Zealand dollar is kind of close to where the reversal zone should be. As in touch of a trend line, second touch, coming for the third touch, as well as a fib level. It is very close to where that should be as well. <clears throat> this move up could be caused by New Zealand dollar weakness as well as pound strength. Um, so it's definitely something to keep an eye on uh, because we are still within this channel. So we're just going to execute some buy positions at the low of the channel. If the market wants to push up a little bit more, then come back down. Let it do that. Don't jump into the trades too early. New Zealand dollar versus the Canadian dollar. Again, one of the pairs, if you remember, last week we mentioned that we are coming back for the touch of this trend line over here, as well as a double top formation. I mentioned this in the last week's video that if we get a break above the neck, uh, above the trend line, do not be scared because that will be a fake out. How did I know that? Because on the daily time frame, even though on a daily time frame we closed above the trend line, we came to some divergence. Okay, the market was pushing a little bit higher. However, our indicator, our oscillator, was pushing lower. Right over there. So um, let me go ahead and make these a little bit more clear to see. But um, as you can see, the market over there was pushing higher and our indicator was pushing lower. Our MACD was pushing lower. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so that was a fake breakout indeed. Uh, on a weekly time frame, you can see that we got a perfect re uh, reaction off that level uh, of the uh, trend line. And the sell positions were executed to the downside. Very, very nice sell. Um, now, on a four-hour time frame, what we can see is we are it, we are look. It looks like we are looking. Wow, well, it looks like we are forming a left shoulder head, right shoulder formation, right over there. Okay. So what I would really, really like to see is a push up to uh, basically create that right shoulder, <clears throat> potentially tap off. A key Fibonacci level as well, depending on where where the market comes down to, okay, and then execute some sell positions at the fib level. I expect the market to push down just a little bit more, okay, to tap off the sixty one point eight of this Fibonacci, as well as this previous reversal was on over there. So I would expect a um, reaction off of this level. To the upside where you can take some intraday buying positions and then the long longer term sell positions to come in at the fib level up there okay especially because on an hourly time frame we are coming to some dive uh, some yet yeah, some divergence some convergence over there as well the market is creating that lower low over there and the indicator is creating a higher high so that buy position in my opinion is definitely going to come to the upside and then after that, the larger scale, the longer term sell positions to come in play. New Zealand dollar versus Canadian dollar, perhaps one of my favorite setups for this week. New Zealand dollar versus the Japanese yen. Uh, very, very easy setup. Uh, one touch, second touch, almost a third touch of the trend line. Break, coming back for the retest, coming back for that Fibonacci level for the continuation to the downside to start then. Really not much needs to be said about this setup. It's the, these sort of setups are some of my favorite ones where you have kind of a retest of a trend line and a Fibonacci level at the same part. So at any point between 61.8 to 71%, I'll be going ahead and executing some sell positions provided we have price action. New Zealand dollar versus US dollar. Almost a similar story to um, New Zealand dollar versus Canadian dollar where we can see on a weekly time frame <clears throat> we have actually formed a one, two, three pin formation. Uh, shooting star, shooting star. Bearish and golfing over there here as well. So, what I would like to see on a shorter time frame, let's say on the four hour time frame, is for the market to push up again, exactly like NZD CAD push up, uh, tap off a fib level, 
uh, previous reversal zone, create that right shoulder for the continuation to the downside to start then. Currently, we have tapped off this trend line as well. So um, I do believe it, it might take, a, take some time until we break it. However, uh, this move to the upside and then the next move following to the downside, in my opinion, that's very likely to happen. So definitely keep an eye on NZD USD as well. US dollar versus the Canadian dollar. <clears throat> the head and shoulder, the inverted head and shoulder is still not satisfied for USD CAD. Still not satisfied, still has room to go up, in my personal opinion anyway. So one touch, second touch coming for the third touch of this trend line on a four hour time frame. One touch over there, second touch, third touch. Fibonacci coming for the touch of that Fibonacci level as well, around 61.8. That would be a very, very good place for us to execute some buying positions to the upside. Again, it is NFP week, so definitely keep an eye on the news, especially US dollar and Canadian dollar news, because even from Monday, we have news for both. So keep your trades safe against the news, especially if they have US dollar or Canadian dollar in them and you're trading them for this week. Uh, so keep your trades safe and make sure you don't take um, losses that you could have easily prevented. However, in terms of a technical uh, analysis from a technical perspective, we can see we're coming from the third touch of that trend line as well as a fib level. So the continuation to the upside is quite likely in my opinion. Uh, finally, last pair I'll be looking at is US dollar versus the Japanese yen. Now I'm working with two different head and shoulder formations over here. Um, let me go ahead and change the color to um, anything that's not a neckline basically. I like to keep the color of my neckline of my head and shoulder formations to um, light blue uh, so I can easily tell which one's the neckline that I'm kind of looking for. <coughs> so I'm working with two different necklines right now, uh, two different head and shoulders more like. Uh, on a four hour time frame we have formed an inverted left shoulder head right shoulder formation, got a break above the neckline, came back for the retest as well, just expecting that continuation to start. Now here's the thing. Here's the thing. The measured move from the head to the neckline of a head and shoulder, that is a projection of where the final profit could be at the breakout of the head and shoulder. That lines up very, very well with this previous reversal zone, reversal, reversal, and reversal over here, okay? So although we have a very steep neckline for this larger scale normal head and shoulder formation as well, I do believe that this inverted head and shoulder will push us up to get another reaction off of the neckline of this normal head and shoulder formation and potentially the move down to start then. But as of now, for this week, I'll be a little bit, I'll be, I'll be bullish on um, US dollar versus Japanese as well. Uh, I do believe that we can get that push up. If that happens early in the week, then I can go ahead and execute some sell positions over there. Uh, that's all the pairs that I have kind of analyzed for this week as well. Uh, so again, if you have any setups that you... Um, any setups that you want to have a look at make sure to message me on instagram let me know link in the description any setups that your analysis disagrees with mine stick to your own analysis uh usually i wait for a london or new york session on monday or even tuesday before executing some trades or reanalyzing them i believe on monday the market is kind of settling over the weekend so the major moves happen around tuesday wednesday thursday uh so so yeah, make sure to wait for price action as well before you execute any trades. Uh, I'll be sending updates for all of these pairs on my Telegram channel. I'll leave the link in the description. Make sure to uh, join it. If you guys have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me on my social media. Again, uh, my Instagram, I'll be leaving the link in the description as well. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, leave a comment down below and let me know if you agree or disagree with my analysis. Let me know if you want to have a look at other pairs or cover a certain topic as well. Have an amazing week, stick to your trading plan, so stick to correct risk management and let's catch some pips.